The Winning Cures Everything, College Football Week 6 Top 10. This is after Week 6. Chris is in Boston, so I am riding solo. This will be shorter than usual, but I will give my top 10 and then explain why for each team as we go. It should not take too long. Let's jump right into it. College Football Top 10, number 10. I've got the Texas Longhorns. Look, a win over USC, like a, a dominating win over USC, a a fairly dominant win, at least on the scoreboard, uh, win over TCU, their first win at Kansas State since 2002, and now a win in the Red River Shootout over Oklahoma, who everybody pegged as a college football playoff contender, college football playoff participant. Uh, Kyler Murray was all everything, et cetera, et cetera, and Texas comes out, offense looks fantastic. 45 to 24. Now, I did tell you last week, Texas is not built like most Big 12 teams. Oklahoma is built to beat Big 12 teams. They're not beat or they're not built to beat those other types of teams. You see here exactly why. I mean, they they ran the ball, they threw the ball, they found holes in the defense. Mark Stoops was fired after not Mark Stoops, uh Stoops, whatever. Stoops was fired, the defensive coordinator. He was fired after the game, I mean, it, that, that tells you everything you need to know, right? Texas, 48 points. It was bonkers. Number nine, I've got Michigan. The Michigan Wolverines jump back up. They are playing really well. This is the stretch right here. This may be the last time that they're in the top ten uh, for the rest of the season. But, uh, but they're playing well right now. A big win over Maryland this weekend. They looked good. They looked dominant. They kind of toyed with them early and then took control of the game late. I'm going to roll with them right now. They've got Wisconsin this week. Then you've got Michigan State. You've got Penn State. Uh, you you need to win these ball games. If you're Jim Harbaugh, you need to win these games. And they are playing like they're capable of doing that right now. Defense looks otherworldly. Should be some good matchups. I know College Game Day will be at uh, Ann Arbor for the Michigan-Wisconsin game. Number eight, UCF. I'm going to keep UCF up here. Uh, if they win this weekend, that tells me a lot about this football team. They are playing at Memphis. Uh, they got the win this past weekend over at SMU. I don't know how many teams in the country couldn't beat SMU. They have improved in the past month of the season uh, from what they were in week one. But I do like the hire that SMU made. They They are improving, but they are not on the level that UCF is right now. UCF is a different animal. Uh, they will be in the top 10 until they lose, like at least in my top 10. Number seven, Penn State. Penn State's got one loss. I'm going to keep them up here because their one loss looks a lot better than everybody else's right now. Uh, their loss was to Ohio State. Yes, it was at home, but they were up on Ohio State. They should have won the ball game. At least they feel like it. Uh, Ohio State fans will, will beg to differ with that, I would imagine. But, yeah, Penn State still looks really good. Uh, I, I mean, we'll see what they do whenever they go play. They've got Michigan State this weekend, but they are more than a two-touchdown favorite uh, at home. And then they play Michigan here in a couple of weeks. So it, we'll see what happens with these two games. And then we'll go from there. I think they've still got Wisconsin left on the schedule. Uh, this, is, uh, this is do or die time for Penn State. Number six, undefeated West Virginia. Now, they played Kansas. They didn't look great. They had three red zone turnovers. That probably doesn't happen if they were to play this ball game again. Still won convincingly, 38-22. to Will Greer, three interceptions. Not a good thing for a Heisman contender to be doing, especially against Kansas. But they are still undefeated. Not a lot of teams out there that can actually say that. Number five, we've got Clemson. Clemson looked dominant this weekend at Wake Forest. They ran for 4 billion yards which is what you're supposed to do to teams like that. Uh, Wake Forest could not stop the run. They could not stop anything. They couldn't score on Clemson's defense. This is the first time that they have really looked dominant in a football game. And once they started up, they did not stop. They did not stop for the whole ball game. Clemson looked good. They looked like a top five team, maybe for the first time all season. Number four, I've got Georgia. I moved Georgia down a little bit. Still haven't seen Georgia play anybody. Now, that changes this weekend in Baton Rouge. Obviously, they're going to LSU. But a big win over Vanderbilt doesn't do anything for me. 
Uh, they do still look like they've got, I mean, they just don't look exactly right yet, but they could still be toying with things because they haven't had to do anything. They've played nobody so far. So, yeah, I've got them at number four right now. Uh, this poll, by the way, my top ten, is a combination of eye tests along with results, record, strength of schedule, whatever you want to say. Uh, it's not purely analytical based. It's not purely eye test based. Georgia is my number four team right now. Number three, I've got Notre Dame. Look, that is as impressive a victory as they will have all season. No, I don't think Virginia Tech is that good. But Virginia Tech, Lane Stadium at night, I mean, primetime spot, that was a good spot for a letdown, especially after uh, after a big win over Stanford last week. This was a spot for a letdown, and Notre Dame did not allow it to happen. Ian Book, Dexter Williams, that defense, this is a really, really good football team. I don't see them losing the rest of the way. They will be in uh, in the playoff if they go undefeated. They're going to knock two Power 5 conferences out of the playoff if they go undefeated. Number two, I've got Ohio State. Uh, very curious what that whole thing was with with Urban Meyer Uh Towards the end of the first half, I believe it was, where he, he dropped to a knee and was holding his head. Uh, he said it was like headache pains. Look, I'll be very surprised if Ohio State, uh, or if, if Urban Meyer is still the head coach at Ohio State after this season. Something Something's a little weird there. But, to his credit, the team still looked really good. 49-26 uh, to 26 win over Indiana. That is, that's a big deal. That's a, that's a good thing. Indiana is not a bad football team. At all, they are they are an average football team, and Ohio State uh, did what they normally do to average football teams, and that is dominate. Number one, Alabama again. Uh, yes, the defense gave up 31 points to Arkansas, but the offense scored 65. The offensive efficiency for this football team is unlike anything that the metrics, like, and I'm talking national metrics, have ever seen. They have the best offensive efficiency to this point in the season of any team that has ever been recorded in college football metrics, which is mind-boggling, right? I believe, uh, let's see, Dave Bartu from CFB Matrix came out before the season and said that Mike Loxley, the offensive coordinator, uh, was rated as a D. And he was on Paul Feinbaum, and he was talking about how Loxley could end up costing this team a game, or Tosh Lapoy, the defensive coordinator, could cost this team a game because they're just not very good coordinators. And Feinbaum did, to his credit, ask him if Loxley had ever played with the amount of talent that, or had it ever coached with the amount of talent that he will have in Tuscaloosa. Bartu could not answer that question because obviously he has not. This offense is other world. The defense is getting better. Now, they're going to miss Trevon Diggs, starting cornerback. He is out with a broken foot for uh, an indetermined or undetermined amount of time. And we'll see what happens. But for the time being, Alabama is the number one team. And their first real test will be November 3rd in Baton Rouge against LSU. And we'll see exactly what LSU is by then. Obviously, LSU's got Georgia and Mississippi State between now and then. But uh, but both teams are coming off of a bye week that week. Um, but yes, Alabama looks really, really good right now. They've scored over 50 points in all six ball games already this year. I mean, that's, that's other level stuff. Other level stuff. All right, as always, this is brought to you by Tunica, Mississippi, the South's premier sports gambling destination. You can bet on games at any of their six sportsbook locations. You can find more information over at tunicatravel.com. You can find all of our stuff over at winningcureseverything.com. Go check that thing out.